just want this to work. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff, and this week I've either been incredibly smart or incredibly stupid. So I've been working like heck to get my GTX 690s working in my cloud gaming rig. However, I've hit a little bit of a stopping point. Just to catch you up, if you didn't watch the previous video in this series, this is my cloud gaming server. It is a 32 core, 64 thread, Epic 7601 based system with 64 gigabytes of DDR4 spread across eight memory channels. Seagate hooked up the storage for this build with a one terabyte Firecuda 510 NVMe drive, as well as a pair of 1.92 terabyte Iron Wolf 110 SSDs. EVGA took care of the power supply with a 1600 watt Supernova T2, and yeah, this system actually could draw in theory up to 1600 watts, but the crown jewel, aside from that Epic 7601, has gotta be the three GTX 690s. Each of these cards has a pair of GK104 NVIDIA GPUs, making the system essentially have six GTX 680s on board. The goal of this build has not been to put together a giant workstation that only one person can use. Rather, it's been to allow up to six people to connect to it remotely and access their own dedicated hardware. And of course, that's where I've ran into a pretty major stopping point. You see, NVIDIA really doesn't like their customers passing through consumer graphics cards into a virtual machine and being able to work on them remotely. They'd much rather you have to pony up for a Quadro graphics card to have that ability. So if a GeForce card finds itself inside of a virtual machine, it will actually prevent the NVIDIA driver from loading and prevent the card from working, giving you a Code 43 inside of Windows. Now I am well aware of the Code 43 issues that plague NVIDIA cards when you are passing through to a virtual machine. So please don't comment or at me on Twitter to give me a different solution. Trust me, I've tried them all. I've tried Proxmox, I've tried Zen, I've tried XCPNG, VMware, Hyper-V with Remote FX even. I even tried installing Unraid at one point, and I feel a little dirty for doing it, but I had heard you have the most success in passing through an NVIDIA graphics card. However, the GTX 90s still didn't want to play ball. And the issue wasn't that I had no success getting this to work, it's that I had 50% success at getting this to work. In fact, only one of the two GPUs would successfully pass through to a VM, and the other would code 43 on me. Now, I have a couple different theories as to what's going on here, and keep in mind, I am just spitballing. Number one, it could be the PLX chip that's on board, which is responsible for the PCI Express bifurcation. You see, when you plug in a single GTX 690 into a system, it actually recognizes as two separate cards on two 8x lanes. It's entirely possible that one GPU passes through just fine, but when the PLX chip is utilized, it detects a hypervisor is running and prevents the second chip from booting up. It could also be something to do with the Epic board, something passing through to the virtual machine that Nvidia is detecting and causing the drivers to code 43 on me. However, today we are going to go back and explore a new virtual GPU solution using some previously very expensive graphics cards. Actually, still currently very expensive because these are still about $3,000 a piece. This is the NVIDIA Tesla M60, and much like the Tesla cards that I've tested in the past, this has no graphical outputs on it. It is 100% a compute and VDI graphics card. It has 16 gigabytes of GDDR5 and dual GM204 GPU cores on it, otherwise known as the GTX 980. So this is the dual graphics card for Maxwell that we never got. Now, before I get too carried away here, both of these cards were graciously donated by ComputerHQ.net, which is an online retail store and specializes in corporate buyout and selling refurbished gear. So if you wanna buy cards like this from used enterprise servers, uh, they're definitely a great spot to go look at. I will have links down to all of their storefronts, that is eBay, Amazon, and Newegg, all down in the video description below. Do go give them a look if this is kinda your jam. But like I was saying, these cards have definitely been heavily modified from their original passive state. Uh, there's some custom copper water blocks on there, which I'm pretty sure are just two copper pads that have been epoxied together with a couple of taps cut in the top so we can actually thread some, uh, some fittings onto there. Uh, it took me quite a while to figure out what these tubes actually were. These are actually four by six millimeter pneumatic tubing and uh, press fit fittings from Legris. So I actually went out and bought a whole heap of those fittings uh, to be able to water cool these cards. Now there is a little bit of water dripping out from the bottom of these tubes because I just spent the last six hours leak testing these cards because, well, quite honestly, I didn't trust anything that's going on inside of here. But rest assured, these are 100% leak proof, at least up to these fittings right here. At least up to these fittings right here. At least up to these fittings right here. 
So what is the plan for today? Well, first and foremost, we're gonna take all of the GTX 690s out of my 32 core Epic build and replace them with the Tesla M60s. Then we're gonna fill up all the rest of the space in here with water cooling gear. I have a 280 millimeter radiator from SwiftTech we're gonna put up on top alongside the two 140 millimeter Noctua fans. I've got an EK pump and res that's gonna go down below here. And then to actually hook up the graphics cards, I have these nifty little four by six millimeter to G1 quarter fittings that are press fit for the pneumatic tubing. So this should actually allow me to convert standard fittings from a water cooling system over to the tubes that are inside of here. So with all that out of the way, let's get probably one of the worst ideas I've ever had up and running, shall we? Little bit of a leak. Whoa. See that right there? That's a problem. Pretty much every single one of the fittings is doing that. Uh, and it's not leaking out from the tube, rather it's leaking from behind the collar right here. You see if I pull on it just slightly, that whole gasket around that is leaking. I think either these fittings don't like this tube or this tube doesn't like these fittings. But either way, it's leaking. All right, so where do we stand? Well, unfortunately right now it works about as good as it looks. Um, I'm pretty sure it's down to a fitting issue. So this right here is the fitting that I bought to convert G1 quarter, which is your standard water cooling fitting over to the four by six millimeter pneumatic tubing. And this is certified to work with that tubing that I bought. It says it's a six millimeter outer diameter, four millimeter inner diameter. It's a press fit fitting, just like everything else that came with this kit. Uh, but for some reason, this just is leaking out from the gasket underneath that press fit fitting. And before all the experts chime in, no, it's not a pressure issue. I'm not supplying too much head pressure from my D5 EK pump. This is rated to 350 PSI of pressure. Uh, we're not doing that here. <laughs> but I think the long and short of it is these fittings just are not going to work for this particular application. I'm not sure what's going on, but something is going on that's causing them pretty much all to leak. I've had all four of them leaking at one point in this system. Um, I even have four extras here. I bought eight of these fittings just in case, and uh, I've swapped a couple of them out, and all of them have the same issue. They are all leaking. The good news is the jankiest part of this setup, which is the water blocks themselves, those are dry as a bone. Those are not leaking at all. So I'm actually really, really excited about that because uh, potentially if I can get the G1 quarter fittings fixed, we can just fire the system up and it should be rock solid. Uh, these other fittings that I purchased uh, from Legris, these are also working fantastically. These uh, haven't leaked once and uh, have been just amazing. So I think what I'm gonna need to do is Overnight some parts, I'm gonna see if I can find a different variety of G1 quarter to six by four millimeter fitting, and uh, hopefully that fixes it. All right, these just arrived in the mail 30 hours later. Hopefully this is uh, exactly the fitting that will solve all of my problems. So here is the old fitting and here is the new fitting. I'll actually do that over here, old fitting, new fitting. Uh, you can see the new fitting has plastic on the press fit, much like the other fittings that I have that were actually working properly. So hopefully this will solve all that ails me. It works. It finally, finally works. Uh, this has definitely been one of the longest projects I've ever worked on on the channel. I started working on this basically 8 a.m. Monday morning. It is now Saturday about 5.30 p.m. Uh, but... It works. Let's walk you through how we got here. And yes, I needed a mojito to celebrate. So rewinding the clock just a little bit, first thing Monday morning, I tore apart both of the Tesla M60s and replaced the tubing that came with it because this is what was inside. Um, it's a little bit more of a rigid tubing. And uh, while it did bite the compression fittings just fine, I really didn't 
trust this. So I wanted to get something with a little bit more elasticity to it, something that would actually bite onto those barbs. Uh, and so far, there has not been a single leak in the Tesla M60s. That is not to say the rest of the loop was leak free. Obviously, my first go round with the Legra 6x4mm to G1 quarter fittings failed spectacularly as all eight of these fittings leaked from around the collar. And I don't think it was an issue of me not having the tubing pressed in far enough because all of these leaked in the exact same way. And man, I fussed with it for probably three or four hours trying to get this to not leak. And uh, these just didn't fit the bill. To fix that, I overnighted a different model from Legris for 6x4mm to G1 quarter fittings. This one has a plastic collar instead of the metal collar, and I think that was all that was needed to uh, get a leak-free operation, because this has been completely leak-free since the time I filled it. I leak tested the loop for about three hours or so and didn't see a single drop, so I figured that evening it was time to finally power on the machine. However, when I hit the power button, there was absolutely no response from the system. No power, no lights, no fan spin, not even a hint of life out of this thing. After an hour of troubleshooting and doing some research, I found the culprit, and it was completely my fault. You see, the Tesla M60s require an 8-pin power adapter on the back of them. However, it's not 8-pin PCI Express. It's an 8-pin CPU EPS connector. That was an issue I really wasn't all that happy to discover, because even my top-of-the-line EVGA Supernova T2 power supply only has two 8-pin EPS connectors, and they're both being used by the Epic motherboard in there. So again, I was left needing to overnight some parts. In this case, it was a dual 8-pin PCI Express to single 8-pin EPS adapter. In the meantime, I still had work on the software side of things to do, so I decided to power up the system in pretty much the jankiest way possible. That is taking my Be Quiet Dark Power Pro power supply, jumpering up the 24 pin so it would start as soon as I plugged it in, and then attaching its two 8 pin EPS connectors to the cards and having the cards power on before the system. It worked, but it's definitely not recommended. With all of the hardware components finally dialed in and running, it was time to start getting the software set up, starting with a fresh install of ESXi 6.7. If you watched part three of this cloud gaming server series, I went through all of the hardware and software requirements to get Grid K2 cards up and running in virtualized GPU mode. I also mentioned in that video that any future cards that Nvidia had come out with required some pretty hefty licensing requirements, both from your hypervisor and from Nvidia themselves. So even if you dropped the full $6,000 asking price for one of these Tesla M60s at launch, you were still on the hook for needing VMware enterprise licensing as well as feature licensing direct from Nvidia. At this point, you're probably asking yourself how I managed to get my system up and running. For the NVIDIA side of things, they do offer a 90-day free trial, which allows you to test out both vGPU and Quadro workstation support with the Tesla M60s. Meanwhile, eBay has some pretty great deals when it comes to VMware Enterprise licensing, including the vCenter server appliance, which is required if you want to run vGPU profiles on your Tesla M60s. A full license, including both software packages, will only run you about $5. Now, having all the required software and then getting all of that required software up and running are two very different conversations. The install of ESXi 6.7 went just as smoothly as I've ever done it. However, getting the NVIDIA drivers installed, getting the vCenter appliance up and running, and getting the NVIDIA license server were a different battle entirely. To get vCenter up and running, I hope you're comfortable inside of DNS, as you're going to need to set up your own local search domain, configure a single sign-on server, as well as make sure all of your clients are either statically or dynamically available inside of DNS, as you need to communicate with them using fully qualified domain names. You'll also need to set up an NVIDIA license server in either a Linux or Windows VM. But be warned, it's temperamental as hell as it's fully built on Java, and it took me I think four different install attempts to get it up and running. Once all that is set up, you can finally install the NVIDIA drivers into the ESXi host so your Teslas will actually appear with vGPU profiles. And now it is finally time to install Windows 10 onto a virtual machine. Run through the setup process, boot up to the desktop, and then make sure you enable either RDP or VNC access, as as soon as we turn on the NVIDIA profiles, you will lose remote access via VMware's web client. Start up your Windows 10 VM, access it through either RDP or VNC, install the NVIDIA Grid driver package that came with your ESXi host driver, reboot your system, access it through either RDP or VNC again, install Parsec, and we are finally 
ready to install a game. And the first question I have to answer is, can it play Crisis? And oh man, can this system play Crisis? 1080p, max settings, 60 FPS, pretty much locked, and it's only using about 45% of one of my Tesla M60 GPUs. And by the way, there's two GPUs per card, meaning that in theory, I could run eight instances of Crisis at 1080p on this one machine. It's a LAN party in a box. For a little bit more modern title, I decided to test out Doom Eternal, and again, holy crap, what a great playing experience. 1080p, high settings, again, pretty much 60 FPS locked, and we're only seeing a peak of about 90% utilization on one of my Tesla M60 cores. So again, this machine could probably run four instances of Doom Eternal. That's pretty solid. Now that I finally have the machine running as I originally envisioned, what, some 10 months ago when I first started out on this project, I think it's finally time to run it through its paces. Later on this week, I'm going to be hosting a virtual LAN party for up to eight people on my Patreon, using nothing but the power cable in the back of the computer, as well as an Ethernet cable to run up to eight players, hopefully at 1080p60. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss the next video with full benchmarks from that. In the meantime, I, I think I'm going to go lie down. This was beyond one of the most stressful builds that I've ever done on this channel. Just to put this all in perspective, this is like homemade plumbing part water cooling on, if this was brand new three years ago, what is $21,000 worth of hardware. It makes me a little nervous. As for what you can do, I'm pretty sure you already know. Make sure to like this video if you liked it and subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. Follow me on Twitter at Craft Computing to keep up with daily shenanigans like this. And if you like what you see on the channel and wanna help support it, make sure to join the Patreon. Link is down in the video description below. You'll get exclusive access to my Discord server where you can chat with myself and the other hosts from Talking Heads. And at the same time, it really helps me keep the lights on around here. Thank you guys so much for watching this one. And as always, I will see you in the next video. And I hope the next one goes smoother. Cheers, guys. I'm gonna go lie down.